big part of the reason that I became an immigration lawyer was because I went through hell in getting my own green card. I knew that I wanted to make a difference in the lives of people. And so I thought, I'm going to live the American dream and start my own baby, start my own law firm, and see where it takes me. My mother was very, very strong as a role model, very, very powerful as a person, and extremely strong as an Indian woman. She said, a woman is supposed to be subservient, a woman is supposed to toe the line and follow what her husband tells her to do, but not one single day of her life did she ever toe the line or listen to my father. My father is just very, very kind, caring, compassionate, and generous to a fault. He was an engineer in the Indian Army, and he came from a really poor family, so he had to work really, really hard. My father and mother are polar opposites, but the one thing that both my parents were in complete accord and agreement over, which is that their three children were definitely going to excel in their education and become professionals. I know for him it was love at first sight. He makes no bones about it. For me, I felt he was one of the nicest human beings that I had ever met in my life. The process from the time I entered the United States till the time I became a U.S. citizen was about a dozen years. It was a long process, very painful, very slow, very stressful. The government just released information. I thought my law firm is not just going to be about being an amazing lawyer, but it's really going to be about compassion and empathy and caring about people. I thought, oh my God, is it okay to give away everything I own in this world, which is my knowledge for free on the internet and write answers for people? And, and my husband actually office. said, trust me, it's gonna pay off, it's okay. And what it did was actually made me see hundreds of real life cases, learn my knowledge, learn the craft. This is uh, connected to the online case management. We started making money, but I kept thinking, oh gosh, the bubble's gonna burst, this can't be true. So I was hiring part-time employees initially and then full-time paralegals and making sure that I didn't overpay people, which in hindsight wasn't very wise. Our clients are our priority, it's what we are about. I would expect so much and demand so much that three out of my four paralegals walked out of within a week of each other. I think they were telling me buzz off bozo, you're stressing the heck out of us. And I didn't get it because I was like, go, 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 like a machine. That was a huge, huge, huge lesson in humility for me to have to take. I had to eat humble pie because I knew the problem was me. I was telling them all the time, take care of the client, but I wasn't taking care of my own staff. If you have good cases, put it in, it will be given to a separate group of immigration officers. Or I'm always constantly divided between staying at this number, which is very nice and comfortable, and the natural urgent inclination to grow. So we need to be using these strategies in helping our clients on a routine basis. I don't need to have more money, and I don't want more responsibility. But if the next generation decides that that's where they're going to take the firm, I would be thrilled and honored. The firm is doing very well, and we do a lot to give back to the community. And I feel that my legacy is already in each family that we have helped to accomplish their great American dream of living and working in this great country. 
And I've been very blessed and fortunate that I've been able to do that in my life.